हाँ सो नाउ द लास्ट टू प्रॉब्लम आई एम गोइंग टू कंप्लीट एंड दैट विल द एंड ऑफ द टॉपिक इन रिकवरबल डेट थर्टीन एंड फोर्टीन प्रॉब्लम सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस थर्टीन एंड फोर्टीन टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट ऑफ द सोल्यूशन ऑफ थर्टीन एंड फोर्टीन प्रॉब्लम देन आई एक्सप्लेन दिस टू प्रॉब्लम Come on, see the thirteenth one. Neha provided the following information for the year ended thirty first March twenty nineteen. So first April twenty eighteen, thirty first March twenty nineteen, beginning of the year, end of the year. So trade receivables are given beginning of the year twelve thousand five hundred and end of the year fifteen thousand five fifty. Opening and closing trade receivable. Neha maintains an allowance for irrecoverable day at ten percent of trade receivable. So normally this business is uh, following ten percent as irrecoverable debt. So beginning of the year, how much was the trade receivable? Twelve thousand five hundred was the trade receivable, and percentage of allowance for irrecoverable debt ten percent. So if you calculate twelve thousand five hundred into ten percent, or twelve thousand five hundred into ten by hundred, you will get one thousand two fifty. So opening balance is one thousand two fifty, right? So twelve thousand five hundred into ten by hundred, you'll get one thousand two fifty. Opening allowance. Now, Neha uh, maintains an allowance for recoverable debt at ten percent of trade receivable at thirty first March twenty nineteen. Irrecoverable debt of dollar five fifty were to be written off. So end of the year trade receivables are fifteen thousand five fifty. <clears throat> now the business has decided that from that five fifty dollar are going to be irrecoverable. So deduct five fifty. Irrecoverable debt will be deducted from trade receivable. After that, we will calculate the allowance. Now prepare uh, first a bit. Calculate the allowance for irrecoverable debt at thirty first March twenty nineteen. So first question, it is asking you to calculate the allowance for irrecoverable debt at the end of the year, thirty first March twenty nineteen. So here a bit, trade receivables on thirty first March twenty nineteen is fifteen thousand five fifty. From trade receivable, first we should deduct irrecoverable debt. So irrecoverable debt five fifty. Deduct five fifty. Fifteen thousand are the trade receivable. Now on this fifteen thousand. We calculate allowance for irrecoverable debt at ten percent. So allowance for irrecoverable debt on thirty first March twenty nineteen. So fifteen thousand into ten by hundred dollar fifteen hundred finished. A bit completed. We have calculated what is the allowance for irrecoverable debt at the end of the year. Now we are second point. Prepare the allowance for irrecoverable debt account for the year ended thirty first March twenty nineteen. Balance the account on that debt and bring the balance down on. First April twenty nineteen, we are required to make the allowance for irrecoverable debt as usual. So allowance for irrecoverable debt, credit side balance brought down. That means beginning of the year. Beginning of the year, how much was the allowance? Twelve thousand five hundred are the trade receivable. Ten percent of twelve thousand five hundred, one thousand two fifty. So balance brought down one thousand two fifty. This is the opening. Allowance for irrecoverable debt. That is 2018 April 1st beginning. Now end of the year. End of the year allowance already we have calculated 1500. Beginning of the year 1250. End of the year 1500. So end of the year allowance has increased. <clears throat> When allowance increased, take it on the credit side income statement. Credit side income statement 1500 minus 1250 250. Last date thirty first March twenty nineteen. Now take the total on the credit side twelve fifty plus two fifty fifteen hundred. Now carry it down, brought down. Take the same fifteen hundred on both the sides. Balance carried down fifteen hundred. Last date thirty first March twenty nineteen. Account closed for the year. Now brought down. Carry it down. We have taken on the left hand debit side. Brought down will be taken on the credit side. Balance brought down fifteen hundred twenty nineteen April first. That's it. This should be taken as April first, not thirty first March. It is April first. Next year started. That's it. 
so we have completed problem number 13 last and final question it's only a theoretical question name one accounting principle which is applied when an allowance for irrecoverable debt is maintained so many times we have discussed that the accounting concept which is used in providing allowance for irrecoverable debt is prudence prudence accounting concept is applied for calculating allowance for irrecoverable debt first question second explain why this accounting principle is applied when maintaining an allowance for irrecoverable debt the two questions are asked the answer for the first question the accounting concept which is applied accounting principle which is applied in allowance for irrecoverable debt is prudence first answer complete second why this accounting concept is applied because prudence accounting concept says income should not be overstated if any expect loss is there that expected loss should also be charged to the income statement income statement should not be overstated that is the principle of prudence concept so to follow that principle we are providing allowance for irrecoverable debt so answer will be the accounting principle applied when an allowance for irrecoverable debt is maintained is prudence second question why why this accounting principle is applied the reason for applying this principle is to ensure that the amount of sales for, for the year which are unlikely to be paid as treated are treated as an expense of that particular year. When sales are made, but the business will treat that we cannot be able to recover the amount of these sales. So when we cannot be able to recover the amount of that sales, we will write off that to the income statement. We'll write off that to the income statement. Or to ensure that the profit is not overstated. Two reasons are given. Why this accounting principle is applied? The first reason is if we are not likely to recover the amount, we should charge it to income statement. Secondly, to ensure that the profit is not overstated. We have to see that the income statement, the profit is should not be overstated. When it will be overstated, when we do not provide irrecoverable debt, allowance for irrecoverable debt. So, and that the asset of trade receivable in the statement of financial position shows a more realistic value. If we provide allowance for irrecoverable debt, then trade receivable, which is shown in the current asset, will be more realistic, more true. If we do not make allowance for irrecoverable debt, then trade receivable will be overstated. That will not be realistic. That is the reason why we apply this allowance for irrecoverable debt so i have completed 14 main problems i have completed so many short questions in the previous videos it's 14 problems in the main uh, in the main problem video this video hope after watching all this you are more confident in attempting the question on irrecoverable debt so do uh, watch my video continuously all the videos Enhance your knowledge, be confident on the subject and do subscribe my channel, share my channel among your friends, among your groups so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Inshallah, we will take up the next topic in the next video. The topic will be accounts from incomplete records that will take up in the next video.